Welcome back again. Another quick video. This time we're actually going to review what this Magna Helix machine is over here and how it's used and what you do with the results. First, I want to show you some pictures. So I remember first buying this. I bought it from um, JL Smith and Company. They cater to um, musical instrument repair technicians. You actually have to have the uh, NAPRP license for that. But I bought it because I was curious how it works and about air pressure in a clarinet many times when you get a clarinet and you want to check to see if it has air tightness you would hold the joint in your hand and originally people would you know breathe in a little bit but breathing in really sucks the pads into the tone holes and creates suction you don't really want to do that because on skin pads that can actually if you create too much pressure separate the skins from the felt more and stretch them out and that can create buzzy pads we're going to review that in another video but if you blow slightly very slightly which is what this does if everything is closed well and the springs are properly tensioned you get a really good result but there's other instances when you don't get it i had a i had a music store actually talk to me and send me a clarinet yeah i believe it was an old Salmer Paris. And their customer just, and they could not get it to play with that full tone. There was always something that seemed like it was leaking, but there's nothing leaking. When you have pads in here, you use a little thing like this. And under each pad, you check to make sure it's tight all around the pad with the tone hole. And that the tone hole is flat and everything's the way it should be. In this case, it was for the music store and no one could figure it out. And the owner just could not get the tonal quality they used to have a full tonal quality not just playing well and plays well you know but it was, it was missing something usually when it's missing something it could be a variety of things one could be a small crack somewhere two what happens is over if your pads are old or there's a little cut in it somewhere the water in your breath can get in it and it makes it expand a bit and that creates a slight leak usually this occurs after about 10 minutes of playing so like you're playing along and then after about 10 minutes, something happens, just the tone just disappears. But in this case, the tone was never there to begin with. And the owner's trying to get his beloved instrument back to the way it was. So they actually sent him to me. This picture we're looking at right here, this machine was showing basically seven and a half inches of water showing the pressure going through the instrument. And that's with the keys being off and each tone hole each hole was plugged with a rubber stopper this is very weird what it should look like is this it should be close to zero so why was this occurring i put it back together and i played it for a while and i noticed because i'm a real light player real light to the touch and as I covered each hole lightly, I, you could see that you could hear the tonal quality just wasn't there. But when I pushed my whole pad down on the tone hole, the sound kind of came and finally the tone was there. What I learned from that is that air, because it was a very old instrument, it was like 60 years old or more, air was coming into the tone hole and it was so dry that air was coming out and permeating through the chimney. And it was coming up through the top of the chimney in most cases. Well, a friend of mine from, I can't remember, I think it was my Selmer Paris guy. I had bought this a long time ago for no particular reason. And he basically told me to use this. It's liquid, special pale French polish. Use a Q-tip, and you put it into each tone hole, and that seals each tone hole so that air leakage around the tone hole doesn't occur anymore. So this, with a magnahelic going close to zero, is a result of sealing those tone holes. Once again, before I sealed a tone hole, it was seven and a half, six and a half, or actually over seven, I should say. And after I sealed the tone holes, it was down to zero. Viola, we fixed the problem, put it back together, it sounded beautiful. Shift it back off, and that was the answer. Anyways, back to 
where we're getting to now with the upper and lower joint. When you take all the keys off and you take the rod screws out, you need to put them someplace in the screws. This little one by eight cut out. This one I actually made myself. From a, I took a picture of this, printed it out. You can see my little printer time stamp for the camera and drilled holes in it. I just used a spray glue to put it on. I have actually multiple one of these, then feel like buying another one and, and I need more. And this is useful for putting all your screws and your rods in there, such as shown below. We can see all these on one of these boards right there. And that's how we know where they go again. So before we get to taking apart a clarinet, you'll want to have something like this. You can buy these also from, uh, I assume, Music Medic and Furries, which are both open for anyone to buy from there. I think that's where I bought these from, is Furries, multiple ones. Anyways, that's a little bit less in there that I used using this one, Magnet Helix Machine, and using the French polish to seal the tone holes. What I do now is any clarinet over 30 years old, I'll use this on every tone hole now. I won't even bother testing it first. This goes on it no matter what, after everything gets oiled up to seal every tone hole. So there's no problem. Anyways, that's just a little bit of knowledge I want to transfer. Uh, before we get to this, I'll, I'm also going to have another quick video about screwdrivers. But for now, that's it. Learning about the Magnet Helix machine and where to put your screws and rods. Hope you liked it. Thumbs up, share, tell your friends about us, and we'll see you later.